Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this new video where I'm going to continue with our series on the QNAP. Today, I'm going to show you how I deploy the QNAP TS364 in my home network. And next to it, I have my old NAS, which is the QNAP TS459 Pro Plus. This old one has five terabyte of storage. I'm going to copy all the five terabyte in this eight terabyte that we're going to configure together. I'll keep this old one as a backup. You don't have to have a backup, but it's always good to have some peace of mind. You can even have it as a NAS like this or you can add a disk behind your, your NAS so you can have a, a copy of your of your data in case the NAS goes bad or in case you can't access it you can use the backup to recover in a different NAS or get whatever file you need in the last video on the QNAP I showed you how I installed the hard drives and the NVMe or SSD on this new QNAP and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to configure those disks I'm going to create storage pools create volumes and start using this in my network so right now they are both on the old NAS is accessible at this address here and it's already available on the network. I have everything set up. The new NAS is here. It just came online, as you can see, with an IP ending in 0.207. I'm going to change this IP to a static IP because I want it to have a static IP so that next time if I get disconnected or something, I know exactly what IP to talk to. So I also went in my DNS server and I changed NAS.local to go to 10.35.0.5 and NAS2.local is pointing to the backup or the old NAS. On the phone, of course, I'm going to use an application called QFile. That's the application that's going to allow me to connect to my QNAP. And as I told you last time, I have a lot of features or a lot of applications that I can have on this QNAP. So we'll go through it slowly. Today is just about getting this deployed in my network and having access to the files. And I'm going to show you how I can have access on my Windows computer, on my Android phone, my iPhone, as well as my MacBook. So let's go ahead and log into the admin page and we are going to continue with our configurations. The default username is admin and the password is the MAC address of the device that we're trying to access. So I'm going to copy the MAC address here and I will just put it on the login interface. So we're going to reach this IP by double clicking on it and we go on login and here we're going to insert the default admin and the password is uh, MAC address. And once we plug it in, we can log it into the device. And now we have access to the admin page and I'll just continue here, data and privacy. I didn't even read it. All right, so now we are on the admin page of our QTS. The QTS is actually the operating system uh, from QNAP. So we have some notifications here. Um, I can go here and do some settings, but I'm just gonna ignore everything and we will do everything uh, manually or later. So now it's asking me if I can create a new account because I've been using a default account. So I'm going to create a new account and I'm going to call it KB Trainings. That's a username. And the password will be KB Trainings 2022 and eight sign. Okay, that's it. All the other details, I can do it later. In terms of group, I want to be part of the administrators. And I think that's it. I don't need all of this. So I'll just create a new user. And as you can see, I have admin. I can disable it if I want to, but for now, I'm logged into as an admin, so I can leave it there. So one other thing I can do is go under general settings and change the name of the server to NAS and all these other things can stay the same. Another thing is to change the IP address on the interface. I want to use 0 0.5. So I'll go under network and file services and click on network and virtual switch. And this is where I can change my IP address. I'm going to set it to a static IP option and configure. And from here, I'll go from DHCP to a static IP address and I'll change the last octet to five and all these other things can stay the same. I click on apply. It's asking me to set the DNS settings. So I'm just going to do it now. And I'm going to use 10.32 or 35.0.2, which is my local DNS. And the second DNS can be the Google DNS. And I'll just click on apply and yes. So now we won't have access from this IP here. I'll need to open another tab and go under 10.35.0.5 or I can do nas.local. Just like I showed you, I have a DNS configured. So nas.local will bring me to the same IP address with my local DNS. 
all right so we are in the system i'm going to create pools and volumes for that i'll go under control panel and storage and snapshots here we can see all the details about all the disks that we have the three hard drives and the two ssds if we go under storage and snapshot we can see that we have nothing here we have no pools no volumes here i'm going to create a new pool and there's an option here called q tier with q tier you can have different types of disks in a single pool and the fastest disk will be used for the files that you need the most so it's uh, some kind of acceleration that is built in but for now i'm not going to use it because i have uh this this pool here will contain only hard drives for the first pool we're going to have the three hard drives disk one two and three so i'm going to have these three here only hard drives and i'm going to use uh, the the ssd for cache acceleration for raid type i'm going to use raid 5 which means that with the three four terabyte disk that i have i'm going to have eight terabyte total because four terabyte will be used for protection or recovery there is a tool on Seagate's website that can help you calculate how much you have with all the different types of RAID. This tool here, in my case, for example, I have four terabyte hard drives. I can click on the, I mean, I have three of them. And if I have RAID 5, you can see that I have eight terabyte capacity with four terabyte protection. And uh, yeah, if I lose one of these disks, I can definitely replace it. RAID 0 would give me 12 terabyte red one will be four terabytes so this is a very good tool that is going to help you exactly know how much capacity you're going to have and the hard drives that i have here are from seagates and these are beautiful and very strong hard drives that you can use for your nas what i had before was from amazon these white label uh, hard drives they are really bad i wouldn't recommend it to anybody all right so next i'm going to click next of course the alert threshold i will set it to 90 percent and enable pool guarantee snapshot space i will change it to 10 percent. i think this should be enough and then next from here we have the summary of everything that we're going to configure 7.26 terabyte and everything looks good i'm going to click on create and it's going to create my first storage pool it's gonna take a moment so we're gonna leave it uh, here so now it's done we can now create a new volume from uh, inside the storage pool here so i'm gonna click on the new volume and what is the type that i want i can go with thick volume or thin but for the general usage thick is fine so i just keep it there and i'm gonna use the storage pool one and click next here i'm going to name it data this is the name of my new volume that i'm going to share on the network and i'll set it to the maximum capacity of my storage pool and yep all these other things can stay the same i don't need to change anything here i think the threshold i'm going to set it to 90 percent for the volume i don't need encryption or anything and that's all i will click on next and it shows me all the summary of everything that i'm creating and then finish it's going to take a moment to create a new volume inside and uh yep now it's going to optimize for a moment here all right but meanwhile we can go under cache acceleration to make sure that we are going to use the ssd to have faster speeds in read and write for our volume with hard drive so i'm going to create a new one and we'll click on next so i'm going to use the ssd that i have the 250 gig one it's going to read and write so i'm going to use it for both reading and writing and there is no security it's going to be just single and the access i'll go all io and then go next so i'm going to select this data volume that i created and click next so this is the summary and i'm going to create it's showing me that it's going to delete everything on the ssd that's fine and i'm going to create that so our ssd is being initialized to be used for cache acceleration uh, for reading and writing to my volume all these other options are can stay the same i don't need them for now So now we need to have access to our volume in our network. I'm going to deploy it on my local network. I'll go under network access 
and we'll go under win slash max slash all these other options so um i have to activate these different services the first one is the microsoft networking service i'm going to enable it we'll name it nas so it's going to show as nas in my network and it's going to be a standalone server i don't need any uh, domain control or anything like that and i can also activate the apple networking service um, i can enable afp but with the smb from microsoft i can have access to to the nas but i can still activate afp for my mac nfs and web dev i don't really need them for now with these two here i will be able to access my nas from all the devices in my network i'm going to click on apply and that will deploy the volume inside my network so let me go on my desktop and see if we can have access to it so from my um, explorer i can go under this pc and select map network drive and from here i'm going to select a letter for my drive z is occupied so i'm going to use i'm going to use y and from here i can do forward slash forward slash nas.local um forward slash um i'm going to have access to homes the folder homes and then finish uh the credentials i'm going to insert our password for kb trainings and as you can see in a moment i have access to the home folder here and it's available on this desktop this is the folder that i have on my nas so from here i can do some tests if i have uh, the right to create a folder i'm going to create a new folder we'll name it test folder and i can also try to copy a file inside this folder just to make sure i can have access um, uh, to the file in all the other devices so i have this pdf that i'm going to copy here and that's for a windows computer so this is from my macbook and from the mac you can see that the mac already sees the nas with the afp i'm going to connect as kb trainings as the username and the password will be our password for the user and i can remember the password and click connect and here you see that we have these three folders here from the nas home homes and public under homes i can see my test folder and if i double click i have the file that i put in there so we are all good on the mac if we go on an android phone i can use the q file application and go under manage nas and make sure that i have my new nas added for the ip i'm going to use nas.local which is the domain name for my uh, for my nas and then username it's going to be kb trainings and the password will be the exact same password that i have and i will have access to my nas as soon as i can log in all right now i can see all the folders as long as i'm in the same network i'm in a local network i can see everything from the nas and on the test folder we can see our document for an iphone we're going to go under q file and do pretty much the same and go under the menu and manage the nas to make sure that i have my new nas configured here and i'm going to add a new nas with nas nas.local and once that is done i'll put the username and the password and then i'm gonna have access to the files just normally so now when it comes to backup and synchronization i'll go under the app center and we'll download any uh, software for backup and synchronization i don't need all of this i can go under backup and sync and i'm going to download the hbs3 which will help me synchronize my data between my old nas and new one and with this i can also create the jobs for my backups and i need to activate some services like the rsync service i'll come under rsync and i'm going to enable the rsync server and here i'm going to use the local account so i don't need to create a new account and i think that's it i'm going to click on apply and we have our sync activated on our device so i'm now i'm going to go on the second nas and make sure nas 2 has our sync enabled so i'm going to open hybrid backup sync and go under backup server and select our sync server so here we're going to have a user which is our sync and the password i'm going to reuse my same password and i'm going to click on apply so we have an our sync server enabled for the nas number two 
and now i can go back to nas1 and create a task that is going to copy my file from the old nas to the new one i'm gonna do active sync and from here what is the source the source will be an rsync server i'm going to select that and we'll give it a name of nas um, nas2 and the ip address will be nas2.local and for the username i'm going to use rsync and the password will be the password we set on the nas2 test connectivity connectivity is good we test the speed the speed is also good 103 meg which is fine i'm going to create the task and i'm going to make sure that i'm going to copy everything from the old nas to the homes folder on my new nas so i'm going to select homes as a destination and the source is multimedia on the old nas because that's where all my data is so i'm gonna grab everything that was under multimedia because here i don't have any other file in any other folder here everything was under multimedia so i'm gonna select that so everything will go in the homes network on the new on the new nas and i'll click on next it's asking me if i want to schedule no schedule i want it to run now and i will click next and all these options can stay the same um, we don't need to lower the speed or anything apply destination permission i think i can just leave it blank and go next and from here everything looks good i can create the task as you can see it's syncing right now it's now at one percent it may take a while to have all the files copied from the old nas to the new one so right now i have all the 3.8 uh 3.78 terabyte that i'm going to copy we are still at one percent so when this is done i'm going to create another task that is going to take care of, of the backups it's going to be a daily backup or it might be in real time when i do any change to my files the new files are copied to the nas and that's how i'm going to have i mean to the the, the the backup nas that's how i'm going to have a backup ready to run anytime i lose data all right guys that's all for today thank you for watching and if you have any question you can leave it in a comment if you like the video like it on youtube and share it with your community and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and don't forget to follow me on facebook instagram and twitter and if you are studying for the cisco ccna 200 301 i have a course on kbtrains.com that goes from zero to engineer it will help you prepare for your ccna certification and pass it thank you guys and i'll see you in the next one take care and bye